Hello, dear friend. Thomas Manton IV here, live from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., the place to be. Um, I've been ministering in the area, in the region, and the Lord spoke to me um, about some, some new things He's going to do in America and some things we need to pray about, some things we need to really ponder on and consider. Number one, you think I'm going to talk about politics, and I may get to that. Probably will. But number one is the kingdom. I'm drinking my muscle milk here. This is good. And that's a, a catchword. People in the church need some muscles in the spirit. And not be, uh, you know, wimpy, self-centered, self-serving children tossed to and fro or tossed to within. God is, uh, is looking for some warriors that want to advance the kingdom. So number one, contrary to what people might think, oh, we're going to talk about politics if we're in Washington. And yes, I am. But you know what? We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the kingdom. We're going to talk about the kingdom. We're going to talk about the purposes of heaven for the church. Because it's the church that is going to cause change and, and cause a breakthrough. Not um, mere politicians. Uh, you know, when I arrived here, I, I was in a car and, a, and it was a, a political station that came on. And I just heard all these Democrats, you know, they're playing the... The sound bites of uh, Pelosi lady and the others, you know, whining and complaining about the shutdown and all that, not knowing that, um, you know, the man in the man in the White House is just trying to do his job. He's trying to do what he promised. He's trying to do what he feels is right and safe for the country. And you know, they blame him for everything. They always twist it around. You know, demons are twisters. They're, they're, they're manipulative, Jezebelic twisters. They twist it around and they blame you for what they're guilty of. And had he had cooperation, you know, things would have been much further along. Let me go back to the church, the, my first premise here, and main uh, foundation of this whole thing. Because Ephesians 2.20 says the foundation of the church is built on the apostles and the prophets of which Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. So uh, we, we need to stop uh, being weak. And we need to rise up and get some muscles back. I'm not promoting this thing, but I just like the word muscle. I like the word muscle. I think it means something. Get our spiritual muscles developed, you know, like uh, before I got saved and started getting into spiritual things, I was a bodybuilder. If you look at that, you still see it's, it's, it's there, you know, after all these years, because the muscle has memory. The muscle has memory. So also, if you were strong once and rich once, you could become strong again and rich again. Some, some millionaire says, you know, he lost a lot. He said, I can make it back because I knew how I made it the first time. So, uh, but the problem is, is a lot of people that don't have a reference point. They never had a reference point. They never saw power. I heard a song on the radio, like it was like, like sound like a country western tune, country western kind of song. Uh, you win some, you lose some. And this was a Christian radio station. I said, please, can we turn that off? I don't want to pollute my spirit. And then I was hearing somebody go on and on about, you know, how ugly he is and he's the enemy of himself. I thought, well, only you know, you know. Sometimes you can look at someone and go, oh my God, you know. Oh my God, what happened? So, but when you're walking in power, you can overcome all that, know that you're above that. We never need to speak against the royalty of God. Even if you disagree with somebody, or you don't particularly like them. If the hand of God is on them in any way, just leave them to it. But the problem I'm seeing more than anything now is, is people are uh, divided. Very divided. Just like we see the conservatives and the liberals are divided and the, uh, 
you know, people are divided. They're divided, they're divided, they're divided and derided, and some are just like stuck in their own thing. All they're, all they're doing is uh, their own thing. People very lazy, very stuck in their ritual, and they're not advancing the kingdom. Number two, I was talking about the power that the church needs to have. Number two, the church needs to become unified. Number three, I was teaching about this uh, earlier today. You can get the word, uh, uh, kingdom keywords, that message. Uh, seven gateways to treasures and, you know, wisdom, power, riches, glory, honor, blessing, might, and dominion. This is what Jesus wanted to give to us. Why, I said this, why would God need to receive power like he didn't have it? He's God himself. No, he received it through the sacrifice that he made to intercede and give it back to man. Not because he needed it. So let's please not think that uh, that Revelation chapter 4 and 5 is just for the Lord to receive something. Well, why did he receive it? He already had it. He was God already. Did you ever think about that? He stood in the gap to give it and throw it back upon us. And sometimes in churches, people talk about everything but power, everything but riches, everything but wisdom, everything but uh, honor, everything but favor, everything but success, everything but uh, blessings and, and, and glory and dominion. Those are the kingdom keywords. So let this be another volume to that message that I just did, but um, I, I feel like the church needs to become unified. People need to break out of the box. When I come back to the, uh, the capital region here, the capital district, what I want to do is I want to have a bunch of leaders come together. We want to really pray over them and see that they all love on one another and open their doors to each other. Because someone can have an event and it's just their event and people think, well, it's just their event and you know, their own people that they know are going to come, but other people don't venture out to drive across town to go to an event and a meeting that uh, is very powerful and they miss the whole thing. And they can make excuses, you know. People make excuses like about saying, uh, uh, you know, the weather. And I, I change my flight schedules to, to get to, to depart from here in a few minutes because there's a big snowstorm coming and I don't want to get stuck so I decided to reroute a day early and I figured I'm gonna sit right here uh, in the airport and deliver you know a, few, a couple things to the to the nation's capital while I'm here I really wanted to bring you greetings from the White House and the uh, memorials and some of those places but I will do that on another trip but the weather is gonna supposed to touch down tonight and tomorrow who knows if there'll be any flights if the snow is that bad they'll cancel everything and I have meetings scheduled tomorrow. I need to be in another city. I'm very busy. I'm a very busy man, so I'm, I'm on to the next uh, event, and I decided to go early rather than take a chance of not getting there on time. So this is great. Now, uh, the Lord is um, very serious about people getting out of the box and wanting to start to advance the kingdom. It's time for you to stop being so churchy and start being more kingdom-y, kingdom-ish, kingdom-dominion-minded. And in the kingdom is all of these things I've been telling you. Revelation 4.11. Power and glory and honor. Woo! And uh, or whatever it says there, those three, there's three words in that one. And the seven is in Revelation 5.12, the next chapter. 11 and 12 talks about the Lamb who received uh, power, riches, wisdom, strength, blessing, glory, and honor. And there's one more, what is it? Anyway, and it, the purpose of, his, of all of this is to take dominion in the earth. Now, what should the church be teaching about? what I'm teaching about right here. And I pray that many pastors take my lead and pick up on this, because this is apostolic, this is prophetic. This is Ephesians 2.20 kind of stuff. The foundation of the church, of Jesus being the chief cornerstone, and the apostles and prophets being his elected 
uh, officers, you know, and, and mouthpieces to bring his words and his power to the nations of the world. It's time that uh, people rise up and get out of this little church mode and get up into the real grown-up mode. You know, I, I, I've, I've said this before, I've, I've discerned people that are adults in age, but in their mind they never grew up out of their childhood. Something got stuck somewhere along the way. That wounded inner child is still resident. And um, I'm going to dive more into uh, a message about uh, killing giants and destroying giants and really dealing with some issues that demo demonic forces attach themselves to, that tie themselves to the psyche and the soul and the past and the history of a person that's really kept them bound and stuck from branching out. Have you ever seen someone that's really insecure? It's because they're unsettled and they've never been affirmed enough. You ever see a child that's been affirmed a lot by parents or they can grow to be giants? Look at uh, even Tiger Woods, the problems that he's had. He got off the way pretty badly, and, you know, really badly, but, but he was affirmed by his dad. Encouraged to go out and play golf and learn the game, even from when he was two years old. And he became the world champion, generated over a billion dollars in, the, in revenues from his talent at playing golf. But he wasn't guessing if he could ever be good. <laughs> oh, I want to tell this to you as a papa, as a father to you. Some people, I want to tell you, you're good and you're very good. Your talent is bona fide and genuine. Your, your, um, your, and welcome all you that are coming on. I'm not looking at the comments on the screen right now because I'm delivering this word before I get on my, my plane in a few minutes and I'm on a tight schedule here, but I, uh, hello and greetings to all of you. Share this. Share these messages. Share the one I did earlier today. Please grab a hold of that. It's called uh, Kingdom Keywords, Volume 1. I'll put the Volume 1 on it. I'll put this as a Volume 2 tag on this. And the Lord, the Lord is really talking about this. Jesus Christ received, this is the leadership of heaven, shouting aloud what he received by what he did. The, he, they, John, the beloved, in the vision, saw the Lamb that was slain, and he received power, riches, wisdom, uh, strength, blessing, glory, and honor. Seven. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, glory, blessing, and honor. Seven. And there was a creature there that was like symbolic of the seven... Uh, spirits of God uh, there in heaven uh, symbolic of the Holy Spirit we see his attributes in another scripture that says uh, you know uh, he's the spirit of wisdom he's the spirit of knowledge he's the spirit of might he's the spirit of understanding he's the spirit of counsel and he's the spirit of the fear of the Lord and of course he is the spirit of the Lord himself so that's the person of the Holy Spirit plus the six attributes he had. Four of them have to do with how you think. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and counsel coming through the mind and through the speech. All right, and this is something that, that people in the church are really not devoted to. People are, are either antiquated or they're uh, you know, not trained up enough or they haven't been switched on. To this kind of revelation, but I'm, I found that this revelation is very expensive. The Lord spoke to me uh, yesterday afternoon, not yesterday, the day before, to, today is Saturday, it was Friday, the Thursday afternoon, he said, or evening, uh, it's evening, yeah, man. and he said to me, I said, son, my investment in you is so great, as you've walked with me all over the world uh, for all these many years, uh, uh, on all six continents of the world, now 32 countries of the world I've been to. Uh, just in my 32nd country, some uh, uh, several weeks back, and I'll do many more. That's there's a lot more countries than that, but that's a few. That's a good. That's a good role there. 32 countries, and I'm going to many more, many, many more. And the Lord is uh, 
uh, you know, serious about his, his investment that he's made in me. He said, son, I've made a big investment in you these many years. He says, I'm protecting my investment in you because I'm a good investor. And I'm not going to let anybody tamper with my investment in you. And I'm using you around the world and I'm going to continue to do that. It's like they call this thing called vested or made. You know, in the mafia world, they say he's a made man. You know, I mean, he's been ordained and uh, sanctioned as a leader and then nobody can touch that one without approval of the leadership. He's like, he's in the family, he's covered and protected by them in their own order the way they do. But the kingdom, you know, all these are copycats of the kingdom. Anything you see in the world, God thought of it first. So we're, the, we're the tri from the tribe of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And, and, and all of this was, you know, from ancient back then. There's nobody in today's world that has anything on us or on God because he created and thought of it all first. So, <laughs> wow. Uh, so when there's investment made in you and you're a made man, you know, you're a, a sanctioned and ordained leader with great power and great significance and great brilliance and great swiftness and great fierceness and great uh, purpose and great, you know, you're greatly profitable to the work of God, you know, to, to God himself and to the work. He's going to take care of you and take care of things. But now here's, the, here's my part of my burden about the, the development of people. So one is the, the kingdom reality is number one, that the church needs to rise up to that. Number two, people need to become unified. Number three, uh, uh, people need to begin to teach and preach on what you know I'm saying here. What the Lord has said in His Word. It's not about what any man thinks. Forget about your opinion, everybody has one. Forget about my opinion, everybody has opinions. But it's, it's what's in the Word. Can you imagine a revelation, the leadership of heaven? Millions of angels, read it, Re Revelation chapter 5, read that whole chapter. Millions of angels, the, the four and twenty elders, the leadership of heaven, this creature that had the seven spirits of God, but meaning, you know, symbolic of the Holy Spirit standing there, and all of this, and they said, they said that the Lord has received power, riches, wisdom, strength or might, and the, uh, 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 blessing, glory, and honor for the purpose of having dominion and giving it back to us, his people, to take dominion in the world. And I dare say it's not being done. It's not being done. People are just like half asleep. But it's time for the church to wake up. Isaiah 52 said what? Awake, O Zion. Awake. Awake. Awake unto righteousness. Awake unto the reality that we have to work while it's day because the night will come when no man can work anymore. And we need to redeem the time for the days are evil. This is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church today. People need to wake up, redeem the time, stop wasting time. I've been prophesying about that all this week. And now the Lord's talking about the keys to power and the gates to power. Is of these things that the Lord received when he did his mediation sacrifice. But now he's giving it back to us. And he's not he's just now doing it. It was, it was written when, when John wrote the book of the Revelation. This was like 2,000 years ago. This was 2,000 years ago. This is not a new formation. This is not a new revelation. It is not a, this is not a modern uh, opinion or, or consensus that just came up. This was established in the book of the Revelation, in the, in the heavenly vision that the Apostle John had 2,000 years ago. Think about that. Also, parents, take care of your children. When they start to scream and cause public disruptions, talk to them. Ask them what they want. What's the matter? Why are you screaming like that? You can't do that. You know, like, and bring some discipline. Don't be mean, but just don't let it go on. I saw one man, I don't consider him a real, 
a real man, because he was walking in, in another airport, I saw. He was walking down the big corridor, and a little boy was on his shoulder and was screaming like a shrill banshee from hell demon at the top of his voice like a fool with an attitude a little baby probably full of the devil or what i don't know and maybe <laughs> and and screaming in the guy's ear i wonder if he had damage to his hearing and i told someone if that was me that would happen one time if it was if it ever even happened once Probably if I had a kid around me, he'd be under the anointing, he'd know enough to, you know, read the signs of how to act and not do that. But I would show that kid what's up and say, you cannot do that. Not in my ear, not in anyone's ear. This is the way we conduct ourselves. And where are the fathers? You know, you, you want to tell somebody something? You wonder if, uh, if they can handle personal counsel. You know, I have a dear mentor, and one thing he, he emphasized a lot, because it's, it's real sensitive. He said, if you really want to grow and be trained well, you have to be able to receive correction, direction, mentoring, you know, coaching, counsel. And it can be done in love and sweetly and nicely. But there's, like, information you're receiving from someone else that you didn't have yourself. And if, if you're too sensitive, you'd be like, oh... How can they tell me that? You know, and you feel all oh, uh. no. You gotta, you gotta kill your flesh and get past that. We need to be like the troops in the army. Come on now, I'm preaching good here, and rise up, and be able to say, tell me, tell me, teach me, what I need to know. Let me correct what I need to correct. Let me fix what I need to fix. Can I tell you, listening to a good mentor? I've been mentoring a lot of people online with uh, these messages and other things I'm doing. And also meeting people uh, by appointment and privately as a, as, a, as a mentor, as a leader to them. And you, uh, you can listen to a mentor and a teacher and learn so much and begin to get revelation of how to conduct yourself in your life. And, and these are keys to blessing. Let me tell you a few of them. Being grateful, being thankful, being honor, honoring to somebody being gentle with someone when you need to kind of guide them and steer them. And, and uh, you know, you, you need to uh, hear that to grow. And I tell you, it's invaluable. Some of the things I've learned from some of my mentors that they told me, believe you me, as brilliant as I am, and you're looking at a brilliant man, God has made me that, but I did not know it readily in my mind. I might have known about it. I might have heard it somewhere before, but it wasn't like right at the tip of my tongue or right at the forefront of my imagination. <sighs> and, and listening to them and taking their counsel and their teaching and training and advice. And it just gave me that. And these are keys to blessing. Having more gratitude to God, being more thankful and gracious to people. I can't tell you how it's blessed me. When people uh, do something good for you you, 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 you acknowledge them and honor them. This is all, you know, and, and the way you conduct yourself uh, with people and the way you, you know, act in wisdom in a lot of different situations, you can take an impartation from the anointing and spirit of wisdom to, uh, to begin to, like, use that in your life. And you might not have had all of that yourself ahead of time. Believe me, you didn't have it enough. Even though you might have known a little bit of it, you might have heard some of it before, but it wasn't in your daily mechanism of routine. And then now you're suffering lack and loss because of that. And you know, we know that loss comes from misplaced trust. So God also wants to turn up God also wants to turn up our discernment that we can discern people, but sometimes you don't always discern people. Let me tell you, con, con artists are the biggest talkers, the best talkers. Preachers that are not okay are the best talkers. They're very manipulative uh, when they're wrong, okay? And uh, people that are con people, thieves, liars, they often have personal... They also have personality 
that can really trick you to believe them. And it's not always so easy to see right through them. You lose something, something goes wrong, something goes wrong and you say, why didn't I see that? And you want to lament about it for a long time, but you didn't see it. So we need other sets of eyes. We need other bits of help. We need interaction with other people. Let me tell you something else. You need to ask questions of qualified leaders. All right? So learning from a mentor is number four or five. Maybe I'm on number six. We need to ask questions and get answers from qualified people. I spoke to someone on Thursday evening on the phone, a, a, a millionaire businessman, friend of mine. And I asked him a question. He gave me an answer that was so brilliant and would save me so much of a lot of things. It's a long list of things. And he just gave me the right answer. And I listened to him and it was like, wow, that's right. That's, that's the way I need to do this. And something in business, okay? I didn't have that right there in my mind, as brilliant as I am. So we're no good by ourselves. We're not good enough by ourselves. We're still good by ourselves, but we're not good enough by ourselves. We need people to help. We need people to be interacting with us. So uh, here I am as the coach again, talking, teaching, training. I want to get into some, maybe something prophetic uh, over the country and the Holy Spirit brings me right back. But we need to pray also about this spiritual battle. It's going on in America. Maybe it's going on in your nation where you are. We need to pray it through. We need to rise up. But, but, but you know what? I, I see the wisdom and the way the Holy Spirit is leading me to deal with this uh, kingdom, to bring forth this kingdom message. You know, I, I see the, the tremendous wisdom in it because what happens is, and I was saying this earlier in the part one of this today, earlier today, uh, here in Washington, D.C. The, 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 the wisdom of this, the brilliance of this, is that when everybody begins to rise and become better, then every, everything begins to elevate and go upward. And then the whole world becomes a better place. The environment and atmospheres begin to change for the better. And everything begins to get better. You know why? Because you're getting better, because I'm getting better, because I'm better, and I'm helping you become better, and I'm making you better. God's making me better. He's made me better. I'm making you better. And, and people are just rising out of ignorance and out of old ways that don't work and old things that kept people stuck. And... Um, as, as that happens in the church, everything is going to rise higher and higher and higher and higher. And God wants to raise you up and to make you a great success. Thank you for being my partner. I think there's seven key things that I said there. Thank you for being my partner on thomasmanton.com. All the information is there and our friends can also put this on the screen. Share this. I'll be back again with you with a, with a part three of this. And I love you live from the nation's capital. We're praying for our president and our government and all the people on the different sides of the fence that everybody gets straightened out and walks right. But the key to breakthrough in America, the key to breakthrough in any country, anywhere in the world, is the church to become powerful, to be the royalty that God has made us to be, that everything begins to get elevated. And when the presence of God comes, answers come, solutions come, things begin to just change for the better in every part of our societies it's the church that has the answer and I'm praying for you that you rise up now in boldness and power and brilliance and excellence that what God has ordained you to do will also affect for the better the lives of others and what God's ordained them to do will help you and help others and we all can synchronize and work this thing together and the kingdom will be advanced through that to that new order of excellence and brilliance and our elevation will bring the power of God to the world to solve problems everywhere. 
and to win literally millions of souls and to see God's kingdom and order advanced and established on the earth. If you don't know Jesus as your savior, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you right now as my Lord and savior in Jesus' name, amen. And now I'll pray for you that God will connect you with the right people that you can grow in the faith and great things will happen in your life and the power of the devil will be broken. You'll begin to be blessed, not only saved for eternity, but also blessed in this life in Jesus' name. And the kingdom is here, and the kingdom is now, and the kingdom is being advanced. I'm Thomas Smith in the fourth. I love you. I'll see you on the next broadcast. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. Talk to you later.